I don't know if we're on the air or not, but uh, we'll do this program until we get back on. Thank you, Jerry. Welcome to Mornings. I was going to say Mornings with Tim and Al. That's what I did in L.A. for a long time. <laughs> it's fun getting old. Welcome to Jesus and Tim in Las Vegas, coming to you from the secret suicide capital of the world, where suicides are not reported here, but in the hometowns of where people came from, because what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Hmm. Uh, Sin City, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God it's is eternal, eternal life. life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Larry Wayne Morbid is our guest today. It's delighted. I'm delighted to have him with us. By the way, if you would like to get our newsletter, uh, Super Dave puts that out every month, and you can get on the list by going to trackman, T-R-A-C-T-M-A-N-T-B, at gmail.com, trackman, T-R-A-C-T-M-A-N-T-B, at gmail.com. And uh, Brandon will have the uh, program up here in a day or two on YouTube, Jesus and Tim in Las Vegas, Jesus and Tim in Las Vegas. Um, first of all, Larry, tell us about yourself. I know you were born at a very early age, but uh, who is Larry Wayne Morbid? Well, I was born at a very early age, <laughs> a little earlier than some. Not so much as suppose I love that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brother Tim, I was uh, uh, born in a Christian family, actually a Pentecostal family, um, and born in Bakersfield, California, grew up in Ventura, California. All I can remember is being in church and, mm. and loving it, being very much a part of all those activities. One of the first uh, great influences in my life was Youth for Christ, one of those great organizations. And it was in that organization that not only did I start a lot of singing, but they had an international talent competition in Winona Lake, Indi uh, Indiana, right. uh, the old Billy Sunday campgrounds. Right. And um, one of the categories they had was song leading. We'd call it worship leading today, mm -hmm. but it was called song leading in those days. Mm -hmm. And at the end of my junior year, I competed, and I actually won that international uh, spot. Wow. Uh, so it was a great, but what that did is really send me on a path mm -hmm. of really loving worship and praise. And uh, certainly into a Christian university, it was Oral Roberts University, and um, began to uh, really seek the Lord as to how I can serve Him, and from that moment, I got to tell you, it's 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 just been nonstop. Mm. It has been nonstop. After I guess I've spent maybe twenty, anywhere from twenty to three years in church ministry, but I also spent in the middle of all that took sixteen, uh, seventeen years off to be on Broadway. Mm. I'm a singer and. Uh, so I was in the Phantom of the Opera playing one of the leads that whole time. Not only did I work on Broadway, which uh, was for about eight years, started in Basel, Switzerland, did a new show there, and we did it in Deutsche. And um, then I went to the first national touring company here in the United States. And after being on Broadway for years, then I came here and did the big production here at the Venetian and for its beginning and, and its ending. And from that point... I've been freelancing really all over the country. How did the family feel about you going on Broadway? Because I'm, I'm from a Baptist preacher's family, and, <laughs> and boy, you didn't go to movies. I remember sneaking off to go into the movies, yeah. and I thought, you know, I, I remember watching St Spartacus and the word, somebody said the word damn, and I thought, Jesus is going to come back. He's going to come. I'm going to be in this theater, <laughs> you know. Well, no, let me tell you, um, the, I grew up in a home where we had no television. And my, mm -hmm. my mother and stepfather purposely yep. had no television. Except for the Republican and Democratic <laughs> conventions every okay. four years and Easter and Christmas. Well, that was it. you're ahead of me then. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the only two movies I think we ever went to uh, as a family were uh, The Alamo and The Ten Commandments. Oh, yeah. I mean, okay. I there was nothing else. So when kids are talking about um, television at school and, right. uh, and in those days they were talking about The Beatles and all kinds of things, oh. I had no idea what they were talking about. I envy them so much. I would just sit there listening to uh, talking about Gunsmoke or, you know, the Lone Ranger, and I, I was so jealous. Uh, well, so yeah. Jealous. Then I heard about things like uh, uh, Beverly Hills Hillbillies or right. whatever. I kept thinking, is this an oxymoron? Didn't know the word, but it certainly <laughs> not. That's what was right. going on. Yeah. And I figured whatever happened on Gilligan's Island probably stayed on Gilligan's Island. I don't I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. had really no idea. Not until I got to college and and all those things kind of changed. But, yes, we were very conservative uh, a home. But in Pentecostal circles in those days, uh, our goal was sanctification, mm -hmm. living a holy life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I certainly think that that's something we should and are trying to re-emphasize these days because I don't know any substitute. When did you realize the baptism of the Holy Spirit was legitimate 
For instance, I, I was I was working for Billy Graham's station, and I went into a, a meeting in Montreat, and people had their hands raised, and they were praising God. Of course, you, in the Baptist church, you never did that. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, um, but what what happened with you? What? Well, look, it, it's all I knew. Yeah. In fact, when I, my, I'm trying to... I've tried in the past to to think of what were my earliest memories. Well, all I can think of were seeing all the instruments on the platform as I'm sleeping on a pallet under the first bench, you know, the, wow. the pews. But I, I heard it all the time. In fact, I was raised in um, an apostolic Pentecostal church as well as um, I was saved in an Assembly of God church, but I grew up in an independent church. I had no questions about it hmm. because I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit uh, and speaking in tongues when I was 12. And I had come to know Christ when I was seven. To me, this was a natural sequence. Was there anybody that, for instance, um, I, I, you know, I spoke in tongues, and but I was very skeptical of it mm -hmm. until I went into a health food store one day, and the Seventh-day Adventist uh, fellow knew me from, I must have emceed one of the concerts there, because I, I went to a rock station because uh, the Graham station didn't want me talking about it on the radio because it was too controversial. But I thought if I could go to a rock station, not play sexually suggestive songs, maybe God could use me. And then they gave me a half hour on Sunday morning where I could talk about the Lord, whatever. And I would promo sometimes my Sunday morning program for a couple of minutes during the week, 6 to 10 in the morning. But uh, when I went to that health food store and the guy said, uh, you're a tongue talker, aren't you? I said, I believe in the gifts of the Spirit. I believe they're for today. He said, why don't you do a little for me? Oh, and I didn't want to show it off, but I remember that the Lord dropped that passage into my heart. Uh, tongues are a sign to those that believe not. And I began to pray in the Spirit in tongues for about 10, 15 seconds. And he stopped me. He said, where'd you learn Italian? I said, I, I don't know I Italian. That story, yeah. He said, where did you learn Italian? I said, I don't know Italian. He said, you were praising God in Italian. And I remembered Acts 10, 46 at Cornelius' house. They heard him speak with tongues and magnify God. And so I was wondering if you had any experiences like that yourself where you, you know, somebody was in the congregation, they were from another country, and somebody spoke in tongues. And uh, Well, I didn't necessarily recognize them, but I've had people uh, come up to me many times. Mm -hmm. Boy, that sounds like a, a form of French mm -hmm. uh, that, you, that you sing, and I, I had no idea. Yeah. But I've had others really talk about the... Well, look, the way that tongues are manifested in this physical sense are very different from individual to individual. Mm -hmm. um, some talk about a heavenly language, but I do believe that we also uh, speak in tongues that are known on the planet simply because when Peter preached on that day of Pentecost, mm -hmm. uh, 3,000 people came to know the Lord, but they heard what was being said about the Lord in their own language. Mm -hmm. So that tells us that's part of it. But whatever that circumstance is, it is to glorify God. Mm -hmm. If 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 we're really paying attention, that's what we want. Yeah. And I never, I've never worried about those things. But to me, it, it to me, it, the idea is, there are so many things that I need to be praying about. I often don't have quite the knowledge uh, to to know specifically what to pray for, but the Holy Spirit does. Right. So I want right. to be careful that I keep a balance in my life. Right. But I have. I also think that we find ourselves praying in tongues about things that would surprise us in the long mm -hmm. run. Sometimes the oh, Lord yeah. reveals it to us, right. sometimes he doesn't. Yeah. But the point is, it is a it is an act that builds our faith. Mm -hmm. All these things that God has provided, it is ultimately about faith. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, look at Abraham did not have scripture. Mm -hmm. There were no writings for him, right. but somehow his faith in God was so strong that God counted it as righteousness. Mm -hmm. Now that's a powerful thing. And this is hundreds of years before Moses ever came along. Yeah. And to, to think about it, because it's Moses who wrote, of course, the Pentateuch, which is really what we think of as the Torah. But it, it is extraordinary when we see that uh, how God... Uh, is using tongues for some reason. He has decided that you and I are going to be part of this battle, this cosmic battle against Satan. And he's given us great tools and weapons mm -hmm. with which to fight this battle. Yeah. And tongues is one of them. And, and, and um, um, I mean, all people have to do is look at the disciples before Pentecost. Mm. They were a bunch of cowards. Yeah, yeah. But once, and, and, and they were already believers in Acts 1-7. Jesus said in Acts 1.8, you'll receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you mm -hmm. and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth. And so that, you know, and, and then it says when when they 
it says they all spoke in tongues. It, wasn't, mm-hmm. it didn't say that Peter had this gift, but over here, James didn't they have the gift. They absolutely did. They yeah. all, this is, look, uh, as the fellowship that I'm a part of, the Assemblies of God, I'm not uh, particularly, I'm licensed with them, and I am very happy to be part mm-hmm. of any affiliation that holds me accountable. I think that's very important. Mm-hmm. But uh, there, there are a lot of different thoughts these days, and my nomenclature is this, brother, mm-hmm. that, so that you would know. Uh, I'm, I'm part of a bigger group called Charismatics. But Charismatics believe a variety of things that I not necessarily would uh, hold to. Mm-hmm. I am one that believes that once we are filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we speak in tongues. Mm-hmm. But there are many folks who think that's just simply just one of the many gifts, and they may or may not speak in tongues. But it's like Paul says in Corinthians, I, look at I speak in tongues more than you all combined. Mm -hmm. I mean, now you may be giving too many messages in the service, so try to be careful about that, back away from that. Mm -hmm. But I'm not telling you not to speak in tongues. And a lot of people have misinterpreted uh, those few verses Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as to be something to back away from. Mm -hmm. There is power to be derived, not only personally, but corporately by speaking in tongues. I mean, my goodness, why wouldn't anyone want that? No, I know. Uh, my concern with with some Pentecostal churches is when everybody speaks in tongues at the same mm-hmm. time. Paul even warned about that. Mm-hmm. He said they'll think you're crazy if you do that. Why do they do that when they know that's what Paul said in in warning them? Well, you're you're really talking about maybe two different things. Oftentimes, when we're simply in a time of praise, mm-hmm. praise is personal, but it's still corporate. But it is still personal. Mm -hmm. And so whether or not I am using English words or whatever my native language is to give God praise, or if I'm speaking in tongues, it should, I should have enough uh, self-control that I'm not shouting it. Mm -hmm. Because that's when things get out of hand. Because Mm -hmm. after all, when someone begins to do that, it's like they're begging for an interpretation. Mm -hmm. Well, when it's simply an act of praise, Mm -hmm. that's all it is. Mm -hmm. And so we don't use the kind of... um, Uh, wisdom that we should. But I will tell you this, talking about that, because I love praise and worship, and I I study it quite a bit. One of my biggest concerns is when pastors will say, friends, let's just praise him. Let's just tell him how much we love him, give him glory, which to me means spontaneously, Lord, you are the great sovereign. You're the holy God, and you are glorious. Mm -hmm. In all that you do, you are powerful, and you are my sovereign. I trust you because you're faithful to me. That is praising God in my language. Mm -hmm. I can certainly do that. One thing, and it sounds like I'm going off the field here a bit, Mm -hmm. but one thing I've seen in so many of our services in the last several years since I came back from Phantom is people start clapping then. There's, there, there are only two real references in the Word of God that are positive about clapping. Mm. There are many other references that are not. Mm. And I'm not sure why people want to do that instead of express themselves. So I think one way or another, you know, when it comes to our corporate praise or even our, our private praise, this is a verbal Mm-hmm. expression. Tongues is very, very verbal, and it has power, and somehow, some way, whether we're speaking in tongues or praying consciously, we are part, a strategic part of this battle that is being fought and will be fought until Satan is cast into the abyss. Amen. Amen. For folks who uh, who know the Lord, they were to die today, they'd be in heaven, but they've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um how do they receive this? How do they receive? And this has been the Bible, folks. What mm-hmm. we're talking about yeah. is in the Bible. Yeah. Uh, how do they? How do they get that? How do they... Well, look, we we have to make sure. There's a very one thing that's very important at the very beginning, Tim. We have to attack biblical illiteracy in this country. There was a time when we had greater literacy among the body of Christ. And that's what I'm talking about. You're always going to have illiteracy among those who do not know Christ. Mm -hmm. But the the issue that I'm very concerned about is people do not know the word. So they will listen to a variety of people with a variety of viewpoints. Um, This can be helpful sometimes, but more often than not, the best thing they could do is to get into the word themselves and ask the spirit of truth which is the Holy Spirit, but Jesus called the Holy Spirit the Spirit of Truth several times, especially in John, and and ask him to reveal the Word. Mm-hmm. In that revelation, it is amazing how he does that. And I'm going to say something else. Now, 
my two advanced degrees, one is in music education, the other one is uh, vocal pedagogy and performance. They're both education degrees. So I, I've learned a lot about education. And one thing I do know that it's taken us as Pentecostals a long time to come to respect the process of being educated, the process of, of learning, of using our brain. We like to tell people that, well, I said, I just serve him with my heart. Mm -hmm. I don't know much about, you know, my, the brain part, the knowing, right. which is nonsense. It's true nonsense because we are whole beings and God made both and he causes us to need to know. And there's going to be a lot of things in the word of God that there are wonderful church fathers that have come alongside us from the very beginning who have spoken into given us commentary. Now, a lot of people like to say that scripture is the Old Testament and the New Testament is commentary on on scripture. And there's a certain truth to that. As a theologian, I can certainly understand that. But the fact of the matter is, is to ask the Holy Spirit to guide us to the people and the places that will help us gain illumination on the Word of God. Mm -hmm. The best source is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we need uh, people who have known the Lord longer, good teachers within the church, to come alongside us and to illuminate. Because this really, really helps. Mm -hmm. um, I, we need those sources because, and, and we have a precedence for it. Mm -hmm. The older people in the Word of, in the body of Christ have always been the best teachers for mm -hmm. us. And I think it's a good idea sometimes to talk about these things. Because it, the, we, got a lot, we got to the point See, this is where I think of the Bab our Baptist friends, and I love the Baptists very much. Mm -hmm. But uh, it seemed like so many years they were talking about the idea that speaking in tongues was for the apostolic age. Mm -hmm. Well, that would have been defined uh, by how long the disciples lived. And the oldest, the one that died the, the latest uh, uh, was John, mm -hmm. the Apostle John. Oh, well, he died, we think, approximately between 92 and 96 A.D. Mm -hmm. And he was the only one that was not... Uh, martyred mm -hmm. uh, among all the disciples. So their insinuation is that the gifts of the Spirit, those nine precious, wonderful gifts, were for only the apostolic period. Well, that can't possibly be. Because I need discernment more today than I've ever needed it. Oh, I need yeah. knowledge more today than I've ever needed. Mm -hmm. I need wisdom in a way that I can't even comprehend in telling you. Mm -hmm. I need miracles. I need faith. I need uh, healing. And I need a prophecy. I need interpretation of tongues. And I need tongues. Mm -hmm. God is, is constantly revealing himself in all of these gifts. And they should be operational around us and in us in the body of Christ. What, what, what do people think when they see what Jesus said in, in Mark 16, these signs shall follow those who believe they shall speak with new tongues? I mean, doesn't that sound like he's encouraging that? Well, it does, doesn't it? And yeah. yet, what they're, because, you know what, brother, I think that somehow, some way, the enemy has found a way to cause us to be self-conscious um, uh, about mm -hmm. speaking in a language we don't know. Yeah. Like, well, how ignorant can you be? Mm -hmm. Well, only uh, stupid people do things like that. Yeah. Or, and how do you know it's not of the devil, bless God? I yeah. mean, I've, I've heard every line you can possibly imagine. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is, if we are communing with God daily and we have an active uh, regimen in the Word of God every day, we're going to recognize the voice of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the Spirit is going to witness to us when something is astray or something yeah. a, a far field or whatever that is because the rest of look all those years that i was in phantom it was between being in church ministry and all the i never left church ministry i want you to know that mm -hmm. in fact one student one time we but you would, weren't doing anything raunchy on stage no heavens no, no. no. i was very very careful about yeah. that yeah. a phantom of the opera is it turns out a lot of pastors came to see that as their first musical they ever saw, walked away and for years have been telling me, I've gotten more sermon material out of that <laughs> show than you can imagine, and, yeah. and well, they should. Yeah. It's a great show of redemption in the, yeah. in the end. Yeah. But nevertheless, I mean, uh, with, with all that, I never left the ministry. You mm -hmm. know, I, a kid asked me, what's it like being a, a Christian, being a pastor uh, on Broadway? And I said, you know what? I act and I sing and I dance to pay my bills but my vocation is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that is true for all of us, mm -hmm. no matter what field that God has called us. Whatever it is that we do, if we're a lawyer, if we're a doctor, we do that to pay the bills. But our vocation never ceases, never ceases to be about Jesus Christ. I promised on Facebook that we would talk about illegal immigration. We only mm. got about three minutes left. Oy, oy, oy. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I, I, you know, when when I was in Nuevo Laredo and uh, we were traveling with this pastor who's uh, had a church in Nuevo Laredo across town with two men from his congregation, and he showed us his his he had been cut in his stomach. Uh, uh, by the cartel, we were following a truck that had a Jesus sticker on it, had other words in Spanish. I says, what does that say? And he told us, he said, that man goes to our church. His teenage son was kidnapped by the cartel a year and a half ago. He has no idea where he is. Uh, uh, he said that's happened with several families in our church. Their, their children have been kidnapped. Um, are they violating God's law? It's against the law to come across the border, but would they have God's sanction to, I mean, if I were a father of teenagers, I'd be trying to cross that border every day. Sure you would. Sure you, you know? would. And that, Are they wrong? Are they sinning by well, doing that? Look, uh, I'm not sure that's exactly the, quite, the right question because you can find typical and same intense situations all over planet Earth. Mm -hmm. And those people want to come into this country as well. Yeah. I'm not... Uh, to me as a Christian, that's politic, uh, politics over there. Once someone is in my congregation or I know that they're part of the body of Christ, all bets are off. Look, there are three th reasons why Isaiah and Jeremiah got on their hinds feet and why they went into... Um, uh, and to a diaspora, dispersion, why they went into Babylon. Two, three things. One was idolatry. Mm -hmm. They were sacrificing their children for God's sake. Number two, they weren't taking care of orphans and for widows. Well, that essentially was mm, the definition of the poor at that time. Mm -hmm. If there was no uh, father in the family as a breadwinner, they were stuck. And number three is that they did not take care of foreigners in their midst those three things that was extremely important because there is a there is an unwritten rule in the middle east that god i'm sure put into motion once someone comes in your home they're like family i don't care where they're from mm -hmm. i don't what their background is whatever is going on they're like family and that was really the rule of, of, of hospitality in in that part of the world and israel was disobeying it and whether or not someone gets here legally or not legally as a Christian, the rules change when they're in our midst. Mm -hmm. We may have political views, and I certainly do. Mm -hmm. Don't don't misunderstand me. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I know the Holy Spirit will do all kinds of things that goes beyond laws. Mm -hmm. Amen. And Amen. our our job is to be sensitive. How can people contact you? Uh, just go to uh, LarryWayne.com, or this is another. This is easy. My name is uh, my. Last name is Larry Morbid, so Larry Morbid at gmail.com. I own my own name at Gmail. Okay. <laughs> it's M O R B I T T. That's right. All yeah. right. Thank you so much, folks, for joining us today. Uh, TrackmanTB at gmail.com is the way you can get the newsletters. Thank you so much for your prayers. I'll be out on the bridge this afternoon, the uh, MGM New York, New York Bridge, handing out tracks. Would appreciate your prayers. And uh, Brother Brandon will have this up on YouTube in a couple of days under Jesus and Tim in Las Vegas. Thank you so much, Larry Wayne. For for my joining pleasure us today. For coming. Thank God you. bless you, my friends. Live for the Lord. Bring home all A's. Tell your friends and neighbors about Jesus. Remember, I love you, especially Chris, David, and Jackie. God bless you. Bye bye.
Give me gas for my Ford, keep me trucking for the Lord.